We have three aims in this presentation. First, to give an overview of the main issues associated with immunocastration and entire male pig production. Second, to summarize the available solutions. And third, to point out where knowledge is still lacking. This presentation is dedicated to the memory of Ulrike Wallo, who chaired the Cust Action Arpima until her untimely death in July this year. Castrated male pigs convert feed into meat less efficiently than entire males. They are therefore less efficient regarding the utilization of resources. Moreover, surgical castration without pain relief is painful to the piglet. This is why there is a growing consensus, at least in Western Europe, that it should be discontinued. There are currently three possible alternatives. Surgical castration with pain relief. Municastration, also known as vaccination against ball taint. And raising entire males, in which the testes are just left and the anima, no castration. Using anesthesia and or analgesia during surgical castration prevents pain to the piglet. Still, we see it as an intermediate solution for the short term, because it is still adverse to animal integrity, it is resource inefficient, and it adds costs. For these reasons, surgical castration with pain relief is not sustainable for the long range in mainstream production, even if it might possibly be a solution for some production systems aiming at very high quality products. Therefore, IPIMA focused on the two remaining alternatives entire males, and immunocastration. Our objectives were to clarify the issues associated with immunocastration and entire males, to sort out real issues based on evidence and based on science from mere opinions, to gather the available information on practical solutions to address the issues and problems, and figure out what is still missing for the solutions to be fully complete. What are the main issues associated with entire male pigs? We first have husbandry and welfare problems. Entire males are more aggressive, and they exhibit mounting behavior, which can be detrimental to their pen mates. The second issue is boar taint, an unpleasant odor and flavor that can be perceived in the meat from some entire male pigs. Two main compounds are held as responsible for boar taint. Andristinum, which is a testicular steroid with a urine-like odor, and scattle, product of the breakdown of the amino acid tryptophan in the hindgut, with a fecal-like odor. Finally, we have other meat quality issues such as the amount of fat in entire males, which can be insufficient for processing dry-cured products. The quality of fat. Entire male pigs deposit more on saturated fatty acids that result in softer fat and fat that is more prone to rancidity, which is again a problem for dry cured products. Meat from entire males is also less tender and has a lower water holding capacity. It is important to realize that all those issues in entire males come from sexual maturation. The steroids produced in the testes are responsible for the better performance, which is nice, but also for aggressiveness and sexual behavior as well as for meat quality issues, including ball taint. In immunocastration, a vaccine is injected to the animal that inhibits steroid production by the testes. Immunocastration is effective only after the second vaccination. Before the second vaccination, animals behave and perform, like entire males. Municastration takes effect gradually after the second vaccination, some traits being affected more rapidly than others. Several weeks are needed for full effectiveness on all affected traits. Unwanted behaviors disappear quickly after the second vaccination in about one week. The advantage in performance acquired before the second vaccination becomes less and less with the time after the second vaccination. The meat quality problems associated with entire males also decrease gradually with time. Ball taint is low in about two weeks. 
toughness and reduced water holding capacity are also reversed quite quickly, to become similar to castrates. Amount of fat and unsaturation of fat takes longer to be reversed. What are the main issues associated with immunocastration? Vaccination may result in some stress to the animals, particularly during the second vaccination in heavier animals. This problem becomes more serious when a third vaccination is needed. One can have the same fat quality problems as in entire males. However, the longer the delay between the second vaccination and slaughter, the less serious the meat quality problems are, but also the less economic advantages are obtained. But the main challenge for immunocastration in Europe is that most markets are reluctant to accept it, under the assumption that consumers may consider it as not acceptable. This presentation will just give a quick summary of the available solutions. For more details, Please have a look at the six accompanying presentations on breeding and genetics, nutrition, husbandry and welfare, meat quality control, processing, consumers and market. Let's now try and make a quick summary of these six presentations. In the following slides, solutions in dark red is for solutions that can be used right now because the knowledge and the tools are currently available. Still open, in grey, is for knowledge that is still lacking, or tools that need further development. More research is needed. Still open, can also stand for actions that are not finalised yet, either because they are not started, or because they are initiated but need to be continued, and developed further. Let's start with the issue of aggressive, and mounting behaviour, in entire males. Farmers' experience and research have led to a number of solutions, including Early socialization in stable groups, where entire males are separated from females. Provision of space in structured pens, and provision of natural materials, that enrich the environment of the animal. Some farmers find it difficult to raise entire male pigs. It is very useful to facilitate experience sharing between farmers, to enable those who are facing difficulties to get solutions from their colleagues. Farmers in countries that have been raising entire males for many years, also have a lot of experience, that could be beneficial for all. Preliminary results, and theoretical studies, indicate that selection against unwanted behaviors might be possible. Automatic recording, and analysis of behaviors, should help in the long run. Depending on the main target products, carcasses from entire males may be too lean resulting in not enough back fat, which is too unsaturated, and low levels of intramuscular fat. Feeding pigs more saturated diets will solve the unsaturation problem in many situations. But in some cases, this will not be enough, and some chains, such as those supplying dry-cured products, may have to switch back to fatter pigs, either by changing breed or adapting selection goals. Selection for higher intramuscular fat content is also advisable to reverse the lack of juiciness and tenderness. A still open question is the extent to which the use of fatter pigs may result in elevated incidence of boar taint. Another one is whether the nutritional tools that are known to be efficient to increase intramuscular fat in castrates and females would also work in entire males and what would be the resulting loss in performance. Meat from entire males is tougher, and has a lower water holding capacity. Solutions at farm level are To use fatter animals, whose carcasses will cool down more slowly in the refrigeration rooms. To feed animals more saturated diets, to increase fat saturation in the carcass, which will reduce protein oxidation. To select for higher water holding capacity. Finding a selectionable trait, highly correlated with tenderness, would enable selection for tenderness, but this is still to come. Another open question is the extent to which it is possible to improve tenderness of meat by rearing, for instance via feed restriction, followed by ad libitum feeding. And what would be the impact on behavior and performance? Solutions at slaughter level are to reduce stress during transport and layerage. Avoiding mixing of pigs is beneficial. Finally processing technologies can be adapted, 
to accommodate the different characteristics of the meat from entire males. Aging meat for a longer time should be beneficial for tenderness. How long should it go without exceeding shelf life? Boar taint is one of the major issues associated with entire males. To reduce the incidence of boar taint at farm level, selection is effective for androstenone, whereas nutrition and management are effective for scattle. Low boar taint sire lines are now available. The problem is, that much of the propensity of slaughter pigs to exhibit boar taint, comes from the dam lines, that have still to be selected against boar taint. The extent to which such a selection would be detrimental to reproductive performance, is still an open question, even if the first results from research are encouraging. Human nose, has been successfully used in a number of slaughter plants across Western Europe, to check boar taint online. This method has, however, many weaknesses. Realistic instrumental methods, that measure androstenone and scattle, are coming. However, there are still uncertainties on instrumental methods. Uncertainties on their total operational costs, including personnel, maintenance, and depreciation of the investment. Uncertainties on precision, and accuracy, in industrial conditions. Uncertainties on the way to use the information they provide to establish cut-off levels. The cut-off levels should be established on the basis of the relationship between the levels of malodorous compounds, and consumer acceptability. Should we aim at a robust relationship, valid all across Europe, or at a more precise one, adapted to the distinctive characteristics of consumers in a given country or area? Is the more precise approach compatible with international trade? There is a growing corpus of knowledge, on how to use tainted meat for processing. There are two main roads. The first one, is to reduce the quantity or concentration of the boar taint compounds. To achieve that, one can reduce the amount of fat in the product, dilute tainted meat with untainted meat, or cook at high temperature. The second one is to make the perception of boar taint more difficult, by using tainted meat in products, that are consumed cold, or masking boar taint with smoke or spices. There are thousands of products with different combinations of fat content, processing method, serving temperature, and spicing. Testing all products to figure out their capacity to include tainted meat, would be an endless task. A possible way out of this problem, is to quantify more precisely the effect of each of the above-mentioned factors through modeling. Finally, the acceptability in real consumption conditions, where meat is mixed with other food, has been little investigated. With immunocastration, meat quality issues are less than with entire males. The longer the time interval between second vaccination and slaughter, the more immunocastrates are similar to surgical castrates for meat quality, but also for resource inefficiency. The delay between second immunization and slaughter, is a convenient tool, to obtain the desired compromise between performance, and meat quality. The results of the IPIMA survey suggest, that informed consumers readily accept immunocastration. What is still open, is to find a smart way of informing the consumers. More generally, which are the reasons why most European pork chains are reluctant to use immunocastration? For both alternatives, entire males and immunocastration, the various partners in the supply chain must work hand in hand, agree on a compromise between performance and quality, and share costs and benefits in a fair way. For more information, you may have a look at the 2019 document from the EU on best practices on the production, processing, and marketing of meat from uncastrated pigs. The special issue of animals, that will be completed early next year, will provide more updated information. It will contain detailed reports corresponding to the six presentations accompanying the present one. Thank you for your attention.